So something I've wanted to do for a while now is to sort out this resonation problem on my 3 inch exhaust on my Silver Astra. So what I've just done is I've just removed this section off of the car. So this is like the centre section that we've uh, built in the past. And you can see it's like a separate section. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate this section into it. Now you can see this is like a 4 inch box. It's a straight through 3 inch so we've got no uh, restrictions in there. But as you can see it's got baffles and stuff inside so hopefully we're going to be able to stop that resonation issue. So basically what's happening at the minute, over 5000 RPM um, the car starts to sound a little bit like Honda-ish you know when they get that raspy rattle noise. Uh, on boost and I can't stand it so that's the uh, problem I'm going to sort. Uh, this is a clamp-on style one that I've got at the minute just to make it a little bit easier to weld. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that in half and I'm going to cut that half there. I'm going to slot it over the top so you can see how that's going to fit nicely in there and it's good that this exhaust splits up into three different sections as well so I ain't even had to take the rear or the front section off. So let's get on with cutting this. I'm just going to mark it up so where I'm going to cut it. See it's only a straight pipe. You can see it's going to be a tight fit and because of the brackets that support the exhaust obviously you can see I'm gonna to have to cut these down probably halfway and put a slot in them and then I'll be able to weld them on in the future and you can see this end as well so that's the bit that slots in so I'm gonna to have to do the same here it's gonna be a nice tight fit but it should work really well so I've just cut off about an inch or so the width of a bit of black tape off of this resonator and then um, what I've done is I was measuring up the length of this pipe for this section here then all I've got to do is measure out this bit here to join onto here so I want it to be like that sort of uh, distance and the reason the good thing about having a clamp on system is I can get under the car I can twist it and do it and move it all different places and then I could just tack it up take it back off the car and weld it up and then if you look down the pipe you can see that the uh, three inch slots into this section here and almost makes it blend in so you can see there's going to be no flow restriction and then we'll hopefully be able to shut this up and you can see it's a nice straight through section as well so we have perfect performance still this uh, section has had quite a bit of modifying in the past. Um, I built this section for a big turbo car um, and then obviously I went back to small turbo and then the shorter dam pipe I had to add in this section here, weld on a different flange um, and instead of just making this whole section up like I was going to, I might as well just cut it here. Saves a lot of this hassle of making that section back up again. What I've just done is I've just measured the total length from here to right onto this bracket before I cut it to 25 and three quarters inch um, so that way I know when I put this silencer in I've just got to make this section here 25 and three quarters and it will slot straight back in perfectly so I'm just going to cut this two inches from the end I just measured it here you can see the mark there's probably plenty of ways to do this but just to get a straight line all the way round all I use is like a Michelor clamp so you can see I just clamp it round and then it just sits nice and perfectly flush to the tube and then I just draw a line straight there around and you're going to get a nice cut instead of it being off to the side or unequal. Changed my mind a little bit and I've cut these sections down a little bit further. You can see I probably took another half inch out of it and also I've cut in some slots. Just so I can slide that over the top. So now I'm just going to run a bead of weld around there. And then all I'm going to do here, I've just slotted in a section and made up a section about this long. So now all I have to do is cut this section off here so it totals up 25 and 3 quarters inch. I was going to put it on the car but there's absolutely no need because you know these uh, sections here are all going to be bolted up in place and these ones are just circular so it doesn't matter at all. So as long as the measurements of the length is right it will just slot nicely and perfectly as it did before. So you can see inside the design it's going to be perfectly free flowing and hopefully some of these baffles in here should uh, stop the reservation issue throughout this 3 inch exhaust. It's a common problem on 3 inch exhaust you get like a drone as opposed to a 2.5 inch. Um, doesn't cause it as much. So that section's all welded up now. So all I've got to do now is I'm just making up a section that goes in the top. So I've just cut out the length that I needed. I measured it so I've got the total length right. So I've just got to slot this in there, hammer that in, weld it up round there and we can get this thing back on. Right, that's in there, so let's finish off the welding. Right, so now that's all welded up now. It's about the best I'm gonna be able to do with a MIG welder until I get my TIG welder set up. Let's get this back on now and see how it fits. 
Right, and there you go. That's all fitted now. You can see I've uh, put brand new clamps and everything on, slid it over the pipe so you can see it fits in there perfectly now. It's come out really nice and uh, we can get it started up now. You can see I've put a brand new gasket up here as well and also I've put on some exhaust paste and that just so that that don't leak. And uh, yeah, so we're all mounted sweet and it looks straight and it's all fitting nice. You can see there's loads of clearance there. So now we can get it up, started up and see if it's uh, sorted that resonation issue out. So now all the exhaust is fitted to the car, it's time to do some map tweaks. Now obviously we want to get this car to run a little bit more power, so we're going to get on with that now. So what we're going to do is we're going to load up the computers and then uh, got them all plugged in at the minute and then we're going to adjust the file. So what I've done is I've just rigged up the spare battery to uh, the car battery just so that when I'm flashing the ECU this power steering pump has to be moving. And while I'm doing that I don't want to have the uh, battery running and bricking the ECU. So we've got two laptops hooked up all the software the diagnostics the hardware is everything's plugged in um, we've got a file already that's been adjusted we've adjusted it we've took some fuel out of it uh, we've upped the boost a little bit and we have took some ignition out because it was running uh, a lot of ignition because it was only running low boost um, so what we're doing is we're taking some um, boost we're putting some boost into it and we're taking some ignition out of it we're also taking some fuel out of it because it was running a bit rich it's running into the AFRs of uh, like in the tens, so we take some fuel out of it, see how that reacts, and uh, go from there. Really, so we're gonna have to do that. Gonna go and do some data logs, do some testing, make sure the fueling's good, and we can adjust it from there. So you can hear right now that we're uh, just programming in the ECU with the new file. You have to do this every file adjustment you do. You can hear the power steer pump go in under the bonnet. So that's why I've got the battery all hooked up. So we've got a good voltage. So we've got to make sure that we've got around 12 volts for the whole time that the ECU is being flashed. You can see on the dash, you know, we've got 12.8, but that's to the dash. And uh, we've got 12.09 to the reader. So, so there we go. It's all, uh, ECU's all been reflashed. Car's on cold start now. You can't beat the smell of a cold day. You can see the condensation. And a cold day with the... Uh, cold start exhaust you can hear how much deeper the exhaust is now so give you a little sand so much better that v power goodness blowing in your face don't mind getting high from that so i'm gonna go out for a drive now do some data logging make sure this map is all good make sure the adjustments are good uh, make sure the fuel in the boost ignition everything's perfectly do some data logs so i'm gonna get on with that just let this get off a cold start Sounds brilliant. So we're going to give this a wash as well because the car's absolutely filthy and we're going for drive. So I've just got another couple of gaskets or four gaskets so that I can sandwich them together. Um, the issue with the gaskets that you get, um, the cheap ones from China, is they're not going to have fire ring on them. You can see around the edge of this, they've got a, like a fire ring like the old CVHs did. Um, the only way to get them to seal was the ones with the fire rings. If you didn't have this fire ring, there's absolutely no point even having a gasket on. So here's a better view of the exhaust system um, in the daytime. You can see uh, it a lot better than you could at night. You know, at uh, this time of year it gets dark really quick. But I've just had to do a slight modification to it. And then obviously just twist the exhaust a little bit because it was rubbing on the rear bumper. I'll show you. And uh, what was happening in there is... It just sat on the rear bumper, you can see, and it just melted it a little bit. So I've just uh, adjusted it now. So we've got a little bit of clearance there now, a couple of centimetre well, centimeter or so. And um, I've also tightened up all the rubbers. So now that's nice and solid. And it fits lovely on the back now. So we can drop this back down. I just wanted to pull off the wheel off the back of this because I wanted to measure these springs. So I want to order new ones. The spring rates on these shocks are absolutely dreadful from Gaz. So I'm going to order some uprated poundage springs because it's the arch spat. You can see why it's sunk in the arch and cracked that. Um, because the uh, wheel is just going so far up into the arch because of these spring rates are way too soft and I said this to you when I put these on I'm not the greatest fan of coilovers on the rear beams I prefer to have a spring on the platform in here that supports it properly but I'm just going to try to put in some uprated springs in there probably going to go to a much more heavier duty so I'm just going to measure the length of these and the width of these now so I can order some so I had to just remove this top out off the top of it just to get it to the inner diameter of the spring but they're all measured now so they're six and a half inch length and they've got a two inch inner diameter so that'd be an easy spring to find i know what poundage i want already so i'm going to get them ordered now so while the wheel was off i couldn't help myself but fit this 9j uh, with the deep dish on the back they're a really aggressive offset but i'm going to get these to fit you can see they're not like impossible 
They're an ET23 9J, which is like mad, but obviously I'm gonna pull out the arch a little bit and they should go in there no problem with a 235 tire. You can see how wide the rear's gonna look though with them on it. So you're gonna have loads of grips. So uh, they look so much better as well than the, like the standard Team D, the seven and a half J's and the eight J's where they're fitting flush the spokes around the alloy. Whereas you can see on these, they've got like a dish similar to the old BMWs. So these Evo wheels, these are 9J as well, but they've got a 235 um, RSR Federal tire on it. And you can see like they've got like a flat, if not slightly stretched wall on them just to get them to clear in there. Cause you can see up in the arch, they've got a big lip in there as opposed to an overtired car, which I'd normally run. You can see on this tire, they've actually got more meat than they have wheel, which will be the opposite way round on the 9J, which makes them look a little bit better as well, but that ain't the point of them. The car's nice and clean, had a fresh wash, ain't had a wash in a while. It's gonna get filthy again, obviously, really quickly, because this time of year it's not really dirty. The roads and that, just noticed it, it's like a SEMA and VEL going on at the minute with all these uh, cars underneath covers. So as we're up in the boost quite a lot now on the car, the uh, actuator that we've got on there at the minute, the Turbo Smart one, the wastegate spring inside there is not strong enough. So we've got a bunch of springs we're gonna mess around with just to uh, get it to hold boost up top a little bit better. So I've just took apart the actuator itself. You can see here, this is basically what it's made up of, very simple design. And I'm just gonna mess around with the wastegate springs till I get the desired boost pressure that I want and it holds it up to around 7,000 RPM which the new turbo can do easily. Right, so it's a new day. You can see that the uh, sun's not out today, a bit cloudy. We uh, spent all ye yesterday testing the car, so we've just got to make some final adjustments to it. Um, it's not holding the correct boost level at the minute. It's holding around 20 pounds of boost, 20 PSI. Um, we want it to hold around 22, something like that. But it's really picked up some power. Finishing off the ECU flash now, you can see writing on the map, nearly done, 94%, 95%. That'll be done in a sec. We're about to start up and go and give it another test. Um, check the boost levels, check the fuel in, and hopefully we get this one right. If not, we'll just do some more changes. There you go, 100%, job done. Unfortunately, I've just come out to do some testing and get some videos for you lot, and you can see it's heavily raining at the minute. Uh, the spot that we usually do our testing is uh, absolutely soaked, so we won't be able to do none today. Uh, I was gonna do some drive-by vids, so I have to get them in the future. I'm gonna get this on the dyno as well when the map is sorted out. We've got some pop bangs in this remap as well. Um, they're not needed low down, but we've got them higher up, you can hear them. 